Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. Welcome to another of our weekly studies. And today we're going to go over uh, a topic, just practice exams. I uh, thought it'd be a good idea as I see uh, throughout the, the group itself, the Facebook group. And of course, just in general, we get tons and tons of questions from students that are looking to obviously pass the ACE exam. Either it's their first time taking it, or whatever the case is. But if you've watched any of these study videos, if you've gone through any of our materials, uh, the reality is, is that one of the best ways to get prepared for this exam, the ACE exam, by the way, any exam, uh, especially a standardized exam, which is basically what these are, is to take practice, practice tests. And when we talk about taking practice tests, there's really two things that go into taking a practice exam. Number one is the is the actual environmental conditions that you are going to be uh, stepping into when you either do it at a testing center or you do it like right here. I can do it at my desk online, right? And they've got their camera, right? The camera is looking at you and they're making sure that there's no extraneous sounds, whatever the case is. But anytime you take that type of examination, it's helpful to do the examination a couple of times so you fully appreciate the environmental conditions that you're going to be under, the number of questions on the exam, how uh, similar are those actual questions and the time, right? So it's a good idea, you know, once you've done all of your studying to get prepped for the actual environment that you're going to be sitting in. So uh, normally you'll take a practice exam that has 150 questions because ACE, um, the actual exam for ACE is 150 question um, test itself. A lot of those are, are not going to be are not going to be uh, part of the grading, but that's because they're constantly looking for new questions to put on uh, future exams. But the point is, is that it's 150 questions and you're going to get, I believe it's uh, three hours to do the to do the test itself. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure it's three hours, but if it's not, they give you more than enough time. Trust me, if you studied and you've gone through the resources that we have sh provided for sure, then you're going to pass the you're going to pass the test um, if you know the material and you do some of these practice exams. So again, okay, so you get it. Number number one, first and foremost, is it helps you to feel the environment, right? So if I'm at my computer and I click start, okay, I got 150 questions, and as long as the environmental conditions are pretty much exactly the same, then I can get a good idea of what I'm in, what I'm in for when I take the actual exam. So that's great. That's, that's part, that part of it, and we definitely want you to do that, which is why uh, BDU, we, we have three 150-question practice exams. The other thing about the practice exam is the study component and using them as a study resource, and this is where some folks get a little confused as to why exactly they're taking practice exams. We hear it all the time. Well, the final exam didn't look anything like the practice exams. Well, what were you expecting? Were you actually expecting questions on the real exam to look even remotely like questions from a practice exam? Of course not. However, you will find some very similar questions, but please don't go into, don't go into a standardized test and think that the quizzes that you took on the ACE website or the practice exams that any of us organizationally, any of us, even those that are, that are educational partners with ACE, please don't think that any of those questions you're going to see exactly on the standardized test. Wow, that's just not going to happen. If it does, well, good for you. I mean, that's great. That's a, that's a bonus. But oh, oh, no, 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 that's not the goal for ACE or any NCCA accredited organization, they are not going to reveal what those actual questions look, taste, and feel like. That's not why you do practice exam, and that's not why you look at questions. Um, the idea is not to study practice exams. That's not what practice exams are designed for. You are learning materials from their textbook and from the other study resources. That's why you have the you know, this is their study companion. If you don't have it, you get a study companion. It just gives you more ways to um, knock that material into your, into your gray matter, into your mid and longer term memory. That's all these things are doing. 
They want to make sure you know the material. So you're not going to like even the question, I'm going to show you three basic questions, three standard questions. And you, you may have even seen these practice questions before. And they're from chapter one. By the way, ACE and any NCCA accredited organization, they don't care about practice exams. Take all you want. Here's a, here's a million questions. That's not, again, that's not the goal. They have a very, very well protected um, database, okay, of questions that they use. And they will at some point later on when they're no longer using those type of questions, they will be released to the public. It's not like all are all, you know, BDU and all these organizations secretly got questions. No, it's, um, it's, it's not like that at all. That's not the practice exam questions. That's not what they're designed for. Practice exams are designed to help you one, environmentally get the feel for the number of questions and the timing and what they kind of look, smell, taste like. But more importantly, the way we recommend you use them, which is the most effective way, is it brings you back to the text and brings you back to those areas that you obviously, if you got the question wrong, you were confused on, or you just didn't know it. That's what practice exams are designed for. It's the way I've always used them. That's the way we've always, um, in our writing of practice exam questions, uh, we want to make sure that they are very similar to the ACE materials, going to bring you back into the relevant material that will then help you pass their exam. Now, by the way, remember, and you've seen this if you're in the group, there are students that remember they pass the exam and they'll literally tell you, oh yeah, there was this question, this question, this question. And that's great because that's helpful. That gets people um, that are ready to take the exam or, or getting close to taking an exam, gives them something to think about and consider. When you go through this Facebook group, just as a, for instance, make sure you're taking note. When people say, well, I just passed last week. Now, just remember code of ethics, you can't, you can't tell people what the questions were. That's, that's just not professional. Okay. But you can say, oh yeah, I saw a question on this and I had a bunch of questions on this. And I had a lot of questions on scope of practice. And that's great. That helps you once again, ACE is not trying to confuse you. They're not trying to, um, you know, make you, make you fail there. That's not their goal. Their goal is just to make sure that you studied and you know the material. Okay. You answering the question, um, that's on you. Okay. And that's what we're trying to help you with. And that's why I want to go over this. Um, when it comes to practice exam questions, there's a couple of things that you've got to, that you've got to think about and consider. And I've been seeing, uh, of course, it's, it's consistent, but I think I've been seeing more this past week, uh, this uh, question or questions related to, um, I'm taking a test in da, 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 two weeks, three weeks, uh, any tips on practice exams or what are the best practice exam? And the answer is, is there are no best practice exams. Certain practice exams from different organizations um, may have more study material related to them or like what BDU does, which is not only give you answers to the, to the particular question, but then try to help and assist with those particular questions, just like I'm gonna do with you today on this weekly study. So again, your goal is to memorize. That's why I have my pad. And uh, just keep in mind, nothing changes. As far as I can tell over the past 30 years of doing this, nothing has changed as far as the study techniques go. Um, read, write, recite write it over and over and over. You take practice exams, use Quizlet, use all of those study resources that help you. If you don't know your particular uh, study, sort of mental way in which you memorize, okay, um, your learning style is what we call it, your, your best study. To, if you don't know that, you take a simple test and it'll tell you you're an audiological learner, you're a visual learner, whatever the case is. But I will say this, and I've, again, said it before, thousand times, if I said it once, it doesn't matter what your learning style primary is, you still have to write out because it's the physicality of writing um, that helps you to memorize some of the material you're writing. It's just that if you say it out loud, there tends to be for audiological learners, an additional sort of uh, input um, 
uh, power input, so to speak, into your into your memory bank. That's all. That's all it is. Again, there's nothing secret about any of this. Okay, so got to have a pad, paper, pencil. I've said it before. Use color. Anything that helps you to memorize, and we see a lot of great techniques that some students um, uh, post into the group. Um, and then, of course, you've got their their study the study guide. You know, their textbook. You've got their study companion. Again, it's a, just a great way in each chapter to go over relevant material. Use that if that if that helps you. It doesn't help everybody. Remember, but the idea is that once you've done all of this, then you've got to take practice exams because you've got to target those areas that you're deficient in when it comes to your when it comes to your knowledge base. What have you or have not memorized? Um, real quick, so I can get to this for you. Study anxiety is a real thing. Do you know what I have found over the years with literally thousands of students? You know what I found? helps with study anxiety. And, and you know, this may, sound, this may sound a little like a punch in the gut. Um, it's actually knowing the materials. It's actually knowing the materials. Here's something that I say, we, we do this in our live course with the BDU live courses. I always ask a student, if I gave you a question, if I gave you 10 questions on arithmetic, what is two plus two, three plus three, four plus four? If I gave you questions on basic fifth, fourth grade arithmetic, how would you do on that exam? And would you have anxiety taking it? And of course the answer is no. Well, why? Be because you know the material so well. Well, folks, please understand something. You use the practice exams to get really knowledgeable, proficient at the material. So if you're going in and having anxiety, more than likely it's because you don't know the material. Okay, so there's no magic, there's no magic, to, there's no study tips or techniques that's going to help you other than guessing the answers, and I'm sure there's a lot of folks that do it. So here's what I do. Here's how I do it. Let's go ahead and, and move on to the first, to the first uh, slide. So I'm just showing you from chapter one, and I don't want to uh, spend a whole lot, uh, whole lot of time on any particular weekly study past something very simple. This works for every chapter. And more than likely, what I'll do is as the, as the weeks go on, I'll go through each chapter. And I'm showing you three basic questions. Some of you may have, may have actually seen these questions on other exam prep, either websites, you purchased them, which you didn't have to do, um, or, or you saw them in the ACE quizzes, right? If you've gone on and you've you purchased their, their study thing that they have, that's great. Um, then you may have seen these same exact questions. The idea that you're gonna see a question on the actual exam that is worded like this is pretty remote. But guess what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the material is the material. However they ask the question, don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. That's what I wanna show you. So. This is normally the way I, I try to deal with practice exams. There's two ways that I always deal. I did it with the, when I took the SAT, when I take, I took the GRE, you take all of these, um, you know, I got to, you have to take all of these tests to get into graduate school, all these men and they're brutal, but there's a way to work these and do them so that it lowers your anxiety and increases your, your retention ability, or at least your, your knowledge base. First thing I do is I look at the question and see if I can answer the question myself. This is the practice component. By the way, when you go into the actual exam, if you already know the answer, boom, get it done, mark it off and move on. With a practice test, when you're doing practice tests or practice exams questions, the first thing I always do is I look at the question and I don't look at the answers. And I try to See whether or not I even know this. Which of the, I know, let's let's go ahead and do it. And you can do this as well. Remember, there's a this little thing. It's a mouse. You can click on it and pause if you need to. Which of the following healthcare professionals has scope of practice specifically includes injury prevention, emergency care, providing rehab, following injuries and surgeries? Stop. Does anybody know what the answer to that question is? Without looking at anything, without going any further. Because you read chapter one, just as a for instance, and it just stuck in your brain. Does anybody know the answer to that? 
is it a is it a chiropractor? Is it a doctor? Is it a um, nurse practitioner? Is it a massage therapist? Is it a this? Is it a that? Well, if you already know the, and I'm not going to tell you the answer because I'm going to show you this. But if you already know the answer, well, good for you. Mark that thing off. You're done with that. You you quote know the material, so it doesn't matter how they ask a question like this again, even on the real exam. So it, I hope that makes sense. Think about this again. If you know the answer, if you are good with certain amount of material, by the way, that's why um, we know that individuals that take the exam and fail it the first time, guess what the second, the second exam retake pass rate is for, for the average for most people? Significantly higher. Why? Because you already saw one of the exams they have. You're already familiar with the questions they're asking. Now all you got to do is go back that's generally what we tell folks is if you know what the domain breakdown was, study those areas that you're deficient, but I don't want to digress too much. Do you know the answer to which of the following? Do you know the answer to that one? If you do, congratulations, you would already write that down. That's works for chapter one, chapter two, chapter. That's what you do. You have 150 questions in a, in a true practice exam. There's 150 questions. And yes, I know people are asking the same question. Well, what if it was the fifth edition or the sixth edition, don't let, don't sweat that so much. Okay, fifth edition was almost exactly, it's almost exactly the same. They did a great job making the material more accessible um, in one sense. Yes, there are changes to the, uh, to the blood pressure, blood pressure information, but that's like one topic that they had to change. So don't get, don't sweat it fifth or sixth edition. And Ace will tell you, if you study the fifth edition, not this guy, you can still pass it, okay? Because the material is essentially the same. Very little change, but they packaged it a whole lot better, in my opinion. So if you know the answer, good for you. Ooh, you mark that off. That's one question that you don't have to spend any time studying on, right? If you didn't know the answer, you'd make a little mark. Got it. Okay. Now, that's one way that I do practice exams. What about the second one? What is the, now, take a deep breath because this confuses people probably more than anything else I've seen on, on the questions on the real exam too. Look at the word in bold, or excuse me, capitalized, best, best. Anytime, little tip, anytime you see the word best, most, whatever, most likely, blah, blah, anything like that where they bold it, they're helping you out, by the way. They are, because what they're telling you is that there's two good answers in there two of them, but one of them is better than the other. Same with the third one. What action would be most appropriate? In the answer, guaranteed there's gonna be two good answers that you could use. Only one of them is gonna be the best. That's just a little tip. So do you know the answer to what is the best way for a trainer to respond when a client is explaining that he or she is feeling depressed due to problems at home? If you know the answer to that because you read the, um, I think it's the knowledge, you know, the knowledge box, expand your knowledge, right? They have a bunch of expand your knowledge. I think it's one of them is in there, probably the first one, but any, any case, did you read through it? And it just stuck in your brain that this is how you respond. Well, you know, the answer, boom, move on. You don't have to spend any time in there. What about the third one? Which action would be most appropriate, most appropriate when working and this individual has exotic, uh, exaggerated lordotic posture. So that's the first way, 150 questions. Normally what I'll do is I'll take a practice exam. And if I know them, I mark them off. Okay, I, my knowledge base now is pretty well established and pretty good. I understand that I know dot, 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 dot. And I know that those questions um, are from chapter, chapter one, for instance. And so that's one way to do it. Now, the other way, is the way most people will do it. And especially because of time, generally time constraint, is you hit, you hit your practice exam and it basically looks like this. Okay, so which of the following, looking at question number one, which of the following, blah, blah, blah. Well, keep in mind multiple choice questions. The answer is right in front of your face. Remember, for multiple choice, this is, this is just exam protocol. You are given the answer. The answer is right in front of your face. You don't need to know the answer. You need to pick the correct answer. Let me say that again. 
when it comes to multiple choice question tests, you don't need to know the right answer. You don't need to know the right answer. All the test cares about is that you pick the right answer. The more you know the material, the better your chance of picking the correct answer. By the way, there's four responses there. One of those is the correct response. Do you know what it is? From the previous slide, if you already knew the answer, well, congratulations. So this was easy. And I'm going to show you. Let me. Is it an exercise physiologist? No. You don't need to know. Do you even know what an exercise physiologist is? He's a clinician. These are experts, so to speak, on rehabilitation, particularly for um, in the cardiac rehab space. Okay, if you knew that, that was easy. But let's say you went into this question and you didn't know and you did not know the answer, but you want to pick the right answer. And you're looking, you're going, well, I kind of know what a chiropractor, don't they like do? Well, I don't know, but more than likely, it's not the chiropractor, right? healthcare professionals, scope of practice, injury prevention. Exercise physiologists don't deal with injury prevention. Chiropractors, I guess you could say they do, but that's not their scope of practice. And the answer, of course, is going to be what? The athletic trainer. Why? I don't want to go into the question you know, too deep. I mean, there's real simple reasons why the athletic trainer jumps out at you. If you didn't read the Expand Your Knowledge part in there. Um, you just got to kind of use your, use your, um, use a little bit of common sense. Um, injury prevention. Do personal trainers do that exercise pros in one sense? Yes, but that's not the direct purpose of the trainer. Do we do emergency care? And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, there is the kicker. That's what helps you Okay, uh, chiropractors, exercise phys, exercise pros, for the most part, that's not the scope of practice. Now we're all CPR certified for a stage, so we can deal with that. But as part of their scope of practice, by the way, who do athletic trainers deal with? Who do athletic trainers deal with? Right, athletes. So they're the ones that are gonna get hurt. Um, providing rehab. Of course, we don't provide. I hope you understand the kind of the idea with looking at this is now what you can do. If you got that question wrong, what do you do? Well, now I go to chapter one and I look in chapter one and uh, I got to go back now to those areas where I saw on page 22 in um, the sixth edition. There's an expand your knowledge page. Well, it's two pages. And guess what it goes? The roles of select health, wellness, and exercise pros. And there it is. On page 22, athletic trainers. Uh, third bullet down is the question, the very question itself. That's the third bullet. Injury prevention, emergency care, therapeutic intervention, working with team physician, rehab of injured players, after athletic injury or post-surgery. Now, um, if you didn't know it, there, that's, that's how I would study to know it. And that's what I would do. If I saw that question, I'm gonna go ahead and athletic, athletic trainer, I write down athletic, and I say it out loud, athletic trainer, uh, injury prevention, athletic injuries, and I would write down that definition. Boom, done. And I would do that over and over a couple of times until it's embedded in my memory. Now, that's literally the technique that I use if I'm going to study for something. Okay. Hope that helps. So what is the best way? Best way. Okay. I told you there's going to be two responses. There's going to be two really good responses, probably. What are the, by the way, if you knew it from the first slide, well, good for you. You would have already moved on. Um, this actually is one of those questions that folks generally get wrong, especially on these practice exams. Again, you've probably seen these. Okay, you don't refer to a psychiatrist. That's not what you refer to anyway. You don't, you're not gonna refer to a subspecialist. 
the referral is generally to their primary care doc. If that was the answer, and it's not the answer, right? No, what is the best way? Do you see the word respond? To respond, not what is the best way to help an individual after they, no, no, no. This is literally somebody that is just talking to you and they're depressed. So what do you do? Okay, you see the two, okay, there's two answers. Listen with empathy, explain the positive effects of exercise on depression. By the way, D, well, and I'm not going to do this, right? That's counseling. You're not a counselor. So don't offer strategies for improved family support. First of all, it's the wrong answer, okay? And second is, is don't do that anyway, because you, you're stepping into waters that you don't belong in. That's way outside your scope of practice. But the two answers, you get the idea. I hope you understand that I'm not telling you the answer to the question to help you to answer this question on some test. No, 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 no. I'm telling you that the question has, has um, elements to it that now are going to get you to go, oh man, I got that wrong. Offer strategy. What do you do? It's from chapter one. And what do I do? I go into chapter one and I find that particular area related to how I deal with clients, right? With respect to, um, you know, uh, family issues, whatever. And I'm going to go through chapter one and I'm going to look for, look for it, look for it. And I'm going to get to whatever page I need to get to. And I look at it and I go, okay, let me now study that particular, that particular area. And it's going to be listen with empathy. I'm not saying you don't explain the positive effects of exercise on depression, but that's not how you respond to somebody. Response is empathetic listening, right? That's the, that's the answer. Listen with empathy. But you see, I would have said also, man, I mean, I'd probably try to explain, okay, after I'm, after I listen to them, then I would have, do you see what I did? The best response, not that the two of them are wrong, uh, one is wrong. Oh, no, no. I would definitely explain positive effects of exercise on depression. And, and even Ace would tell you, these are one of the, that's one of the things you would talk to clients about, but not, not when they're explaining the issues to you right then and there. Your first step is to listen with empathy. That would be the, and that's why it's the best, best way. But I would go back. What do you do? You go back to chapter one, look where you look, where that information is. And then you would write it down and go listen with empathy for whatever, the, whatever the book tells you. Question two, question three, which action by a trainer would be most appropriate if you knew the answer already? Good for you. Um, when working with a client who has an exaggerated lordotic posture, um, there's, two, there's two answers. Two answers that you might think make a whole lot of sense. What are they? A, Implementing core conditioning program. Yeah, sure. I mean, that sounds great, right? You got a problem with the lordotic curve in the back. Man, I'm going to do some core training, right? Perfect. And you already know, I hope you already know, you don't diagnose anything. So any word, anything with the term diagnose for a trainer is like, that's just not, you're never going to do that. And what's the other word? See what they did? They helped you with this question. You don't prescribe anything. You don't prescribe anything. You're not a physician. You're not a clinician. So diet, well, that left you with two decent answers because look, incorporating only machine-based exercises, hmm, I mean, that doesn't sound too bad. I mean, that might be something that I would, I might put people more on machines and this is the thought process that you're going through, maybe. Okay, so of those two answers, why do we not do this one? because this one's the answer, by the way, A is the answer. Because what do we do? Exaggerated lordotic posture? Well, what's that caused by? I, I mean, I don't know, but you would read through it and this is from chapter one, right? And you would go back into chapter one and ask yourself a question. What is the scope of practice of the trainer? Well, it's implementing programs. Boop. Implementing a core conditioning program. Hope that makes sense. Now you'll find that in chapter one. If you look in there, you'll see that they speak to scope of practice is exercise development programs, right? And that's what the personal trainer does. Um, this is way 
way too specific. Okay, the idea that you're going to wait for postural issue improvement, um, that could be forever. This doesn't, it just doesn't make sense anyway, because once you look at the, um, the IFT model, um, you're going to see that that's not a, just a recommended um, way to deal with an exaggerated lordotic posture. But the point is, is that that question from chapter one is going to be addressed here. What do you do? You open it up and look and go, well, let me find out what the uh, implementing core programming. And you're going to see that in chapter one, it's not a whole lot of it, but in chapter one, there's going to be, that will be addressed. And so all I'm doing, again, ladies and gentlemen, please understand, I'm not trying to help you to answer a particular question with those. I'm trying to get you to think in a general broad way about this concept of practice exams. So ultimately, understand, take the test, right? Practice, but look then at the questions. So those are the two ways that I just showed you how I do it. Sometimes I just go through, do I know the question? Do I, where is my knowledge base? Okay, and I can work from there. Or as most people do, is you take the question, you know what the, once you find out what the incorrect answer was, now you know what the correct response is. Now you can go, look, do not, do not think that now that you know the correct answer to that particular question, that's studying. That's not the study part. Because like I say, I'm not sure how many of those questions. Look, BDU, we have three 150 question practice exams. Some of those questions can, are related to some older, older type questioning scenarios that ace, but it doesn't matter because the material is the material. If the questions are longer or shorter, the reality is still the same. Did you know the material? And if you didn't, you got to go back to the book, textbook first, and then use your other study techniques, right? Which could be, again, Quizlet, um, listening, to, listening to our study guides, our chapter by chapter study guides, read, write, recite the material until you understand that the reason you got that question wrong was because you did not know, uh, just for instance, what, uh, what chiropractors do or what you know, exercise professionals do. That would be the case. Uh, and you do that for all 150 questions on that test. Spend time in one test. One test. Don't take three practice exams. You're, it's like it's like drinking through a um, through a fire hose. One practice exam at a time, and spend the time with that practice exam. Go through all of the questions you got wrong. By the way, when I say the questions you got wrong, I'm talking about the ones that you did not guess and got right. Because I'm sure there's a a lot of questions that you basically said, "Eh, that looks good," and then you guessed. Well, no, that doesn't help you either. The practice exam is really designed to help you to understand the questions and the material related to those questions because the practice exams have material parsed out according to the domains that ACE has for their actual tests. So um, again, I'm running way over. I don't want to um, spend too much time delving into different parts of the topics. Please, please do yourself and do us a favor and uh, let us know how this particular study, this particular weekly study helped you, and then ask more questions, follow-up questions to this, because that, um, that will definitely assist other students as well as yourself, um, and just do it right underneath, right in this uh, study video itself. Uh, give me a response. Let me know if it helped you. Hey, Doug, can you do a little bit more of this? Can you explain this part of it a little bit more? Boy, we are just more than happy to help y'all uh, pass this ACE exam on the first attempt. That's our goal. Or if you did not pass it on the first, then for sure to knock it out of the ballpark on the second. Look, Corey and I do a Q&A every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, ask some questions. We're going to respond to them anyway. We do that. We do that live. And uh, we're more than happy to respond to your questions. Have a great weekend, and we're going to see you next week. Thanks.